Any idea how many things you have here? Oh, there's a lot here. It's, um, it's only a small backyard. I've only got about 80 square metres of garden, but I've got about 30 fruit trees, about 23 types of berries, yeah. and there's about 60 or 80 medicinal herbs packed in there somewhere. Goodness, there's well, a lot, man. yeah. Oh, it's a whole forest sure. garden. It's basically a big living ecosystem, and there's about seven layers like a temperate forest. Seven. And it's all naturally pest free. And the great thing about it is, uh, it's about six years old now, but on the fourth year, we got about 240 kilos of fruit. That much? Food, sorry. Fantastic. So it yeah. was about 161 kilos of um, fruit, about 11 kilos of berries. Now I've got twice as much berries. Uh, and right. even um, better is um, every year consistently I can get between 60 to 75 kilos of veggies, but it's predominantly a perennial system. Mm -hmm. So even in the middle of winter, there's lots growing. Yeah. So the annual veggies are scattered right through it, so you can't even tell that they're here, yeah. but neither can the pests come through. Wow, um, so tell me, how do all these plants fit in together? Ah, oh, it's, um, it's all done very strategically. I use a system called companion planting, yeah. where plants all benefit each other. They're grown um, with other plants that are beneficial to their growth. Right. Um, so they either help them resist diseases, um, get rid of pests, bring in beneficial insects to kill off um, pests or fight root diseases, increase vigour and just increase plant health in general, also create microclimate. So as you can see, there's lots of layers and they all work together. It looks like a little jungle, but um, it's all very strategic. Here's a basic example of a plant that you can use for set masking. This is just regular rosemary. Mm. As the wind catches, all the rosemary um, smell will drift off and the plants won't, s uh, the insects won't smell your, um, um, pl your veggies downwind. So that works pretty mm, straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I can show you another one. This is a classic example of what people use, which is wormwood. Oh yeah, it's good on your wormwood. So wormwood, it's great to, pat, uh, to plant this on one edge of your garden. Yep. And the fantastic thing about wormwood, it's got a, um, a very strong insect repellent smell. Yep. And that works wonders. Here's another plant here. This is also another pest repellent. This one's called tansy. Right, yep. So tansy was used traditionally as a fly repellent in medieval Europe. You plant this between your fruit trees, it repels pests. So that works really, really well. Now we've got a few other ones here. These are nasturtiums. And nasturtiums are both um, a scent, um, scent masking plant and also a trap crop. Yep. So they exude mustard oil, which repels coddling moth. They also attract aphids, which works really, really well. And then we have other insect repellent plants, also other beneficials like feverfew here. Oh, yeah. Feverfew's got the little um, pansy, uh, the little daisy-like flowers, and it's got very aromatic leaves as well. Right. And that's related to the pyrethrum daisy, so that's one of the other pest repellent plants. Now I'll show you some yarrow, which we were talking about sure. earlier. Now yarrow is quite ornamental. Oh yeah, it is good, isn't it? See, it's got the little white flowers. These oh, yeah. feed beneficial insects. And the foliage is, um, works great as a compost starter. Just, uh, you can use comfrey and yarrow and nettles, chop them up and throw them in your compost, gets your compost started. Yes, right, and sure. this exudes all, the, um, exudes all the chemicals from the roots, which stimulate plant vigor and also increases the aromatic oils. Wow in yep. um, your culinary herbs and also your set masking plants. Wow. This is actually um, lemon geranium or lemon pelargonium more correctly. Yep. It, um, as the leaves rub, like I, when the wind blows them, yep. um, it releases lemon oil and anything with lemon oil is pest repellent. Mm. So this is actually a good companion plant for grapes. Oh yeah. So that's why we've got it growing under the grapes here. And also, the great thing about it is if you're going out in summer to work in your garden, you don't want to get eaten by mosses, just rub your arms through it. Is that right? And yeah. you end yeah. up lemon-scented and actually repels mosquitoes. Yeah. Similarly, when the wind blows it, it releases lemon oil yeah. and it'll repel pests as well. Lovely. So any of the lemon-scented herbs are a great pest repellent and that's part of that scent masking mm. um, thing. But it's actually a step beyond scent masking, it's actually the insect repellent. Yeah. Um, method of um, companion planting. Sure. So that works really, really well. So see, th this one here is chamomile. And the great thing about chamomile, not only can you make chamomile tea out of that, but again, we see the little daisy-like flowers just like feverfew. 
Now, the, what, what I didn't mention last time is that these shallow flowers also attract all the um, parasitic wasps. Oh, wow. They can, um, so it feeds them, and then they will go and hunt down all your caterpillars as well. So I, don't, I have butterflies, but no caterpillars. Oh, wow. And yes. I'll show the horseradish over sure. this way. So we even have more, this is valerian. Again, it has those small shallow flowers. So these feed all the beneficials. I'm familiar with the pink valerian, but I haven't seen the white valerian. This is the medicinal one, actually. Oh, okay, right. Now if we just squeeze through here, sure. there is all the horseradish. Now it's only got a little, a little bit of snail damage, mm. but as you see, nothing else, the rhubarb is pristine there. Yeah. So it's all hiding under here. But so tell me again, so, what's the horseradish for? Oh, the horseradish is a, a, it's a sacrificial plant. So the snails will eat that. You can tell it's snail damage because snails will always eat from the centre um, out because they can rasp through leaves. If you've got sure. things eaten from the edges, they're caterpillars. Yep. And this is attracting all the snails and slugs. They'll damage this and they will leave all the other plants around it alone. The other thing with this is you can put it in your spud patch um, it's beneficial for potatoes and it exudes a fungicide right through the soil wow. and as it does that um, protects all your potatoes Tell me about that alyssum. Yeah, now it's over here. You can actually see the plant growing Now again, we have those very shallow flowers which attract all the beneficial insects hoverflies lacewings ladybirds and Those little shallow flowers allow them to get their short mouth parts in and this is normally used as a, um, as a border for mm. cottage gardens. Strangely enough, most people don't realise it's actually related to mustard. It's the, from the mustard family. Mm. And it attracts lots and lots of beneficials. It will self-seed and it'll die down and it'll regrow. So once you plant, it just keeps on coming. Mm. And this is essentially a, a food haven, oh, yeah. a very rich nectar source for beneficial insects. Sure. And it makes a fantastic, nice border, breaks up the garden edges. Yeah. So um, it's great to plant this. You just plant it once and forget yeah. it. Yep. Little, oh, I forgot to explain the calendulas. Up where the, uh, yeah. So we'll go around this way. Okay. Okay. Follow me this way. Okay. Yep. Again, we have. Um, Calendulas are a great companion plant. Oh, yeah. So these, again, the daisy family, and these self-seed very readily, and they actually also had a bit of colour to the garden too. And we're talking about shape masking earlier. You can see there's lettuce amongst all the calendulas, amongst all the perennial leeks. So they all get, the outline gets broken up. So it's hard for insects to find these plants in here. Sometimes it's hard for me to find them too, because um, if I don't remember where I put them, but as long as I sort of put some order to them, um, you can actually hide them quite nicely. And okay. um, here's another fantastic um, pest repellent plant. Mm. If you rub and smell, it's got a very fragrant smell. It almost smells halfway between like lime jelly or, um, or Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah, and right. This is related to the wormwood family. It's called southern wood, also known as lad's love, and it's a great pest repellent. It just repels pests. Mm. And it bushes out, you just hedge it down and keep it nice and tidy. Mm. So this is a fantastic pest repellent. It's another one of those companion plants that just repels pests. Yeah, terrific. Um, you just put, use it as a low ground cover, yep. and it just does its job. Wow.